Hello and welcome to this session about um, coping after redundancy. And with me is coach Rashid Ogun Lauren. And Rashid has two sites. He has Zara.com, um, which is a life coaching website, and Soul trader.biz for anyone who may be thinking about starting their own business. So I met Rashid probably, oh, I don't know, maybe eight, nine years ago at a talk that you still do them, don't you, with the British Library? Mm -hmm. Entrepreneurs, yeah. 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 It was a long time ago. We were both teenagers at the time. <laughs> yeah, of course. Incredibly young if it was that long ago, but a delight to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me here today. No, thank you. Thank you for coming along. And, and the reason why I asked Rashid um, today is because I, I I really like his approach of the very practical, but also the very, I don't know if you would quite call it spiritual, but it's certainly, you know, about taking a step back, isn't it? And, and thinking about all, all aspects of life. And it's not about pushing and forcing yourself, you know, through things. It, it's about going within and and thinking about what's important to you and, and that's that's an approach that really resonates with me and obviously when 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 you've been made redundant the, the tendency for some people i know is to go straight into panic mode get get on that computer you know get firing this um job applications off and i keep telling people that that isn't the right way to go it's all about pausing and thinking about what's important for you so would you agree with that rashid i couldn't agree with you more i mean i think there's a few things that are so important here you know when you're made redundant the first thing is the space thing that you've mentioned um just giving yourself that time to pause and breathe and it's amazing that even giving yourself a half a day to pause and breathe after perhaps hearing that news mm. um is really really important um, and also to you know, sometimes with freelancing, there's a long lead up, isn't there? So it does give you sometimes to think, where am I at? What do I want to do? Do I want to carry on doing um, what I'm doing um, already? Do I want to do something completely new? What are the specifics that actually relate? So I came up with just before today, just um, a handful of five things, really, if you like, beginning with five that I thought were really key. And you've just touched on the first one, Paul, okay. which, is, which is space. Um, and, and I think that the second thing I would say is really specifics. And the specifics for me is like, where are you at? What are the actual specifics that are going on? When is it? Where are you at? Um, what does it mean? You know, sometimes with different people to redundancy, you must see it all the time with the site and so on. Different people are in different places. Some people that there's going to be um, a redundancy payout. Sometimes there's no payout. What are the specifics in terms of your circumstances? You know, you, being aware of financially where are you at? Some people might be lucky. They might be perhaps near retirement. They might be lucky that they might happen to have a good pension. Somebody else might be in the completely opposite situation where it, uh, um, um, that, they, there isn't that much provision. You know, so it's really thinking about what are your specific circumstances. And again, is what you were saying, what Paula is so important, because it's important what you don't want to do is just suddenly react or just feel as though you need to do this or need to do that. Um, and, and, and for me, one of the other things is really, really important to be strategic. Where am I? Where am I going? Do I want to do this? Do I want to do that? And to realize that there are options open to us. So those are the first, you know, those are the first three that I would say, you know, that being really strategic about it. Please, please, please don't rush. It can be daunting. It can seem overwhelming. And um, But be strategic. Where am I at? What do I want to do? Do I want to give myself some space? Um, what does it mean? The, the worst thing is it can, of course, it's very emotional, but you don't want to make anything worse by making any rash decisions, dumping or deciding I'm not going to do that. Okay, I'm leaving right now or what have you. But even if you, and also even if you're already on that thing where you've left your job, and you think about what next, that's going to require you being strategic as well. Mm -hmm. um, about what you want to do, be it a new career, be it starting up in your business and so on. So you're going to, it's going to require us being strategic too. Yeah. And I think what you said about the specifics is really important. I mean, it can be scary looking at what's going out, you know, <laughs> what you need, you know, what needs to come in each month. But actually, you need to know and putting, putting your head in the sand is, isn't going to serve you long term here, is it? It's really not going to. And I think that this is where, you know, one of, one of my other S's here is useful, that it's important to think about what are your skills, what are your strengths, what are your passions? Um, because it might well be, you might think, you know what, after 25 years of doing blah, 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 I'm not sure about that anymore. And there's this side of me to do with people or travel or this or that, that I never, that I hadn't really fully exploited. Or on the other hand, you know what, I've done this and this is the bit of my job that I really, really enjoy. 
So I think it's, and it's so good that you brought in the other S word, the scary word, um, in, in a way, yes, to know that um, it's very natural to be scared, to be um, afraid, to be worried and so on. It's very natural, but, um, but by pausing, giving yourself that space, thinking about, okay, what are the specifics here? What's it involve? Um, sometimes we might be lucky, there might be um, um, an outplacement package of some kind of support. Sometimes we might be lucky, there might be other things that, are, uh, uh, that might be there. You know, it's really important, once you know the specifics of your circumstances, how much money is coming in, how much money is coming out, and we're all in such different circumstances, um, it's gonna help you to be most sensible. And also the other thing is here that's interesting, isn't it, Paula, that when I've been made redundant, or rather, my role has been made redundant, which is often a better way to look at, you know, your role is no longer there rather than you made redundant. But you may not be the only person who's affected. So being mindful about other people's emotions, you might have family, you might have loved ones, you might have dependents, you might be married, there might be siblings. So being mindful to take care of your own <laughs> um, and well-being. But that's why I then move on to this one about your skills and your strengths. No, that just because your job role is being made um, redundant, and however old you are, that's another thing to say that you've got all of these strengths and you've got all these skills and there are all these possibilities. They say nowadays, and you're probably more of an expert than me at this point of that. Now they'll say, when, when I was first made, when I was made redundant for my very first job, which I, I don't want to give away the year, but it was, it was, a, it was a really long time ago. I know, like, <laughs> now, and now I've given away that I'm no long, not really a teenager, but it was a really long time ago. And I thought, oh my goodness, what am I going to do now? Blah, 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 this, this and that. And actually at the time, I think I was 28. Yeah. But I, but whole life ahead. And even if this happens to you at 58, um, there's so much richness, or, or, or even at 60, often richness that you can bring to the table. And there's options, whether you want to work full-time, whether you want to be your own boss, whether you want to work part-time, whether you want to be, work flexibly. And things have shifted. And they say now that we're probably going to be made redundant very often. Many people might have been made redundant three or four times, it, it, I, I'd imagine. In well, I've got one interview with somebody who's been, been made redundant nine times. And uh, I mean, he's in IT, so... I think that I think IT is an industry where it does happen a lot. People are prepared for it. Right. But yeah, I mean, as he mentioned, as he says, you know, it's it's been amazing for building your resilience. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the thing is that you know, for me, Paula, then uh, with this, I mean, the chances are also if you're in that situation, if you've been made redundant once or nine times, and you've, and especially, I guess, if you've had a long career, you've got lots of skills. So what's mm -hmm. really important is to give yourself that space, pause, think. Highlight what your skills and strengths are. So one of the things that I find amazing, Paula, as a coach, is that very often we can be quite tough on ourselves or overlook um, our skills and the talents. And that's why my approach is very much, as you were kind of pointed to at the beginning, that not just thinking strategically, but, you know, almost with a softer, some might even say spiritual dimension. Who am I? Why am I here? What's really important to me? Redundancy, though it can be challenging, gives us opportunity to ask ourselves these questions. Who am I? What am I here? What's really important to me now? What do I really, really love? What are my skills and my talents? And what are the things I'm really wanting to do next? And, 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 and that's a really very powerful point. And, and for me, that brings me on to like, you know, perhaps the, the, the last of the, the, the letters beginning with S that's really important, support. Mm. Because there's lots of support out there. I mean, your site, your resource is a great example of one. Um, but there's all sorts of support. So first, so don't feel as though you need to do it on your own. No. First, you'll find out in terms of if you are going through that whole process, what support's available in work. Um, um, reach out to friends, family, loved ones. Know who's going to be really most supportive. So you might need to be measured. Mm -hmm. You know, I often sometimes say, Paula, beware seeking, um, you know, advice, building advice from a chef or culinary advice from a builder. You know, so you're going to have to be really careful who you're asking, what type of advice or whatever. But in terms of support, there might be a number of people can be supportive in different ways. But I think it's also important that you begin to develop your own counsel and know what kind of things you share, what things you need to keep to yourself and being measured. But that support thing is incredibly important. Um, and, and, and be it the case that um, not just for that process of um, dealing with the initial shock, but many people will be then reestablishing themselves perhaps in new careers or wanting to start up in business. You know, I'm a life coach and business coach, as you mentioned, and as well as a leadership co coaching organization. So very often you're going to need help and support to learn something new. Mm -hmm. 
there's lots of places out there that can help you on that journey, whatever it, whatever it is. Be it you're, you're starting out a business, what's business support out there? There's places like the British Library's Business and IP Centre and the network of business centres out there. Perhaps you're starting a new career. Well, there's all sorts, of, especially nowadays online with resources like this. You know, the, on LinkedIn, there's all sorts of specialist groups, there's meetup groups. So what support's out there, as well as tapping into your own support network? Don't be afraid to ask those people near you. And you might also know people in your own network who can help you with your next steps. So it's really important not to be shy. You're going to need support. We all do need support. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I take your point about picking the right people. I know um, one of my clients, she asked somebody to look at her CV. And this somebody was a good friend of hers, but it also happened to be a bit of a... Um, <laughs> a grammar aficionado and her CV came back covered in in red comments and crossings out and so on and she just felt utterly demoralized for a few days um, and although you know the help was well intentioned it was probably a bit a bit too much yeah you're so so right this is where all the things we we've, we've touched on today are so important give yourself the space because sometimes you need to just sometimes first of all it's too new it's too raw and especially for those people who are here on the site where it's just happened, or there's the threat of it. Um, and we're recording this at a particular time when there's all sorts of things going on in the world. And they'll often will be, you know, perhaps in your industry or what have you and, and so on. So give yourself the space. It might be, you know, do you also, are you, are you really exhausted? You've been working for a long time. Do you need to rest? Um, uh, that, that's the first thing. And um, those specifics of knowing where you're actually at and that thing about support, who is the best person to give the right kind of support based on what you need, because you need to be very, you need to be very shrewd. And this is where the strategic comes into it. Mm. Who's the best person to ask for this? Because you don't want to get the wrong advice or you don't want to get somebody who's giving you well-meant advice, but they don't have the tenderness <laughs> to, <laughs> to, to be kind with you or the opposite. People who are going to be just so nice to you, they're not going to say, hang on a minute. And I think it's also important that you're mindful about X or Y. But I think anyone who's watching this who's wanting to support um, people who are going through um, redundancy, I think it's important to be mindful that it can be a very, very challenging time. And I think, you know, it's just this or it's just that. Actually, we know that very often, um, particularly in places like the UK, um, people often define themselves rightly or wrongly mm. by their career and what they do. It means a huge amount to them. So it can be, it can be daunting and it can be devastating, but it can be, as we know, incredibly exciting. It can be the birthplace of doing what you've always meant to do. Yeah, yeah. well, let's, let's hope it is. Um, yeah, I mean, I, there are always stories about people who've, you know, started their, their business that they've been thinking about for the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. In that novel, uh, one of the, one of the most watched videos on, on this hub is actually how to break into creative industry. So you see, there are a lot of people out there who who want to do something different. Really interesting point, this, isn't it? That we've got the and when I do career workshops, I often ask people what they're passionate about, and then there's all these other things that people are good. The people who are good with jewelry, the people who who've got a side hustle, make cakes, or or or, or, or doing all sorts of things, artistic and all that kind of stuff. I would say one, one thing that I would say as a, as a coach, including those people who are on that journey of starting their own business in the sessions I run at the British Library, is um, if you are making the move from being employed to um, starting your own business, it is different. We know, okay, if I'm going for a new job in the same industry, I need to brush up my CV, make sure my LinkedIn profile, and things like that are sorted out. If I am um, a slight career change in some way, I know there might be some retraining or I might need to brush up on some other things or, or highlight other skills that I've had. But when it comes to starting up your own business, there's probably going to be a whole range of other skills that you're going to additionally need to do. Mm -hmm. So it's one thing doing something you're passionate about, but you're also going to probably need to understand business. Now, you might be lucky that your background has been involved in business some way or something that's complementary. You maybe you're very strong when it comes to admin organization. Maybe you've even worked in business development or something like that, where you might have a head start. But the chances are you're going to need to find out about your industry, about your sector. You're going to probably uh, and that you're going into. You're probably need to find out about all the rules and regulations relating to the field that you're going into, and you're going to need to just get used to that whole habit of being your own boss, whereas before there might be in the office, the photocopier, or, you know, you've got all the other things, you've got a team of people and support. Suddenly when you start as your own boss, there's just you. 
Um, and if you're not used to that independent work, it can be a shock, but you're also going to need to be very, very, very strategic on then where you are, and you need to be, under, be able to understand what I would call the three pillars of business. There's all the finance stuff, you know, the profit, the, the, the revenue, understanding about tax. Nobody was born an expert on that, so you can learn, and there are accountants in that to help you. Then there's all the stuff about marketing. Some people, it's great if you're good at putting yourself out there, but other people might be shy. So you've got to be mindful about that. And also all the day-to-day -day practical things. So it's really important that you're doing a, what they call a SWOT analysis, what are my strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And really, I'd say, study your field. Learn anything you can about business, learn anything you can about field. And there's all sorts of professional bodies out there and business organizations where you can learn, go out there and network and also tap into your own network. So if you are going into that business thing, you do need to be especially mindful and it will probably take some time. We see all the wonderful TV shows, don't we, Paula, about people driving around in taxis and so on. I can tell you coaching lots of people, it, business isn't quite like that. It can be incredibly rewarding, but it is quite a journey and you you're going to probably find that working harder even than you were before, but it's far more joyful knowing your own boss. You've got to kind of know what your own personality type is like. Am I cut out for that? Or do I far prefer the regularity? If you need the regularity of the salary and also what stage of life are you at? And is your family at and so on? I was lucky when I became my own boss. I didn't have that many. I didn't have dependents. Mm -hmm. I had a little bit of flexibility and so on. This is where all the things we've talked about here are really important. Space, what are the specifics? the support, being mindful about your skills um, and what your strengths are and all the specifics. Yeah, yeah. And I think for someone who's been in business a long time, there is something about, there is often a, a very low level anxiety when you're in business, even when things are going really well in that, ooh, you know, especially when you have clients, something could go wrong and that would, I talked to somebody yesterday and one of her clients had pulled out and that was her income for the month. Um, and, and as a self-employed person running a business, you, you learn to live with that, but that is something you have to learn to live with. But on the plus side, there's also the wonderful feeling that, you know, I, I can earn the li my living by my wits and I don't rely on any employer or any organisation. You're so right. And I think this is where, <clears throat> you know, that reflection on what kind of person am I, where am I at? Sometimes you get to that point, some people, I bet you hear it all the time, people realise, actually, I'm unemployable. I can't now be told by somebody what to do. I have to do it myself. So you've got to know, are you resilient and resourceful? If you're, if you're a self-starter, then the chances are, and if you back yourself, if you've got a good mindset, the chances are that you will make a go of it. You'll probably make it work. But the encouraging thing is, but what I would say to somebody who's thinking about it, is, could you dip your toe in the water? Could you try something out or, or what have you? You know, um, And also nothing is forever. You could start and decide, you know what, this isn't for me. Um, and there's no, there's no, there's no um, shame in deciding, actually, this isn't working, this isn't working for me, I'm going to go back to being employed. Um, so so um, don't feel as though everything is finite. I know sometimes things can seem really finite. This is the end of it, this is the end of my career. And so when I was thinking that at 28, how wrong was I? It was, um, it was a real, real beginning. But again, equally, I know many of the people who, I, I was on a call the other day with a colleague of mine who I think is, he's coming up to his 60th, full of energy, full of lots he wants to do, so many things he wants to do, but, um, but beyond. And I think that's one of the magical things now, yeah. um, that there's more things that we can do, or people who want to, you know, because you might be in that situation where you're at retirement age, but you also want to do work, or you want to do something new, or be your own boss. There's, there's so much potential, but I'd say also surround yourself with other good people. And perhaps there are other people who've been through the same thing or other people who can support you. you building your network is going to be really useful for you for the next stage in your career. And especially if you're going to be your own boss. Mm. I'd like to go back to something that you said and actually relate mm. to other people. So you mentioned about there's no shame in it in, in starting something and it not working. Mm. And I do find that the, quite a few people are held back by whether it's changing career or starting mm -hmm. a business mm -hmm. um, by that feeling of well, what will people think mm -hmm. what will people think if i do something different and it fails mm -hmm. so if you've got any advice for somebody who's in that mindset i think you know they they say there's no failure no failure only 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 feedback mm -hmm. um i think uh, adopt i mean one of the things i talk about in my book for example soul trader which i wrote which is about basically coaching yourself to move ahead in your own, to starting your own business, but running your own business and from, and from heart. And, and people can find the first chapter free on, 
on my soul-trader.biz website. But, but really just to distill it into uh, um, some of those things into a few tips is back yourself and adopt the attitude of an athlete. Study your field, master your craft. Learn from the races that you win and that you lose. You're going to learn far more from the races that you lose than the ones that you win. Perhaps from the whole redundancy also. So now you realize, you know what? This environment wasn't quite right for me. I need to be like this. This is how I need to work. There might be so much learning. So it's really important. I, I was saying, where this hurting, what's the learning? What's the learning from the difficulty? And I think that if you are somebody who's thinking about going into business, that ability to quickly move from reflecting back from why is this happening or not happening to where am I, what do I need to do is really, really key. So I'd say don't get too caught up. I mean, a bit like imagine that you're driving along and the car stops, there's a problem and, and so on. You might for a while sit with the why and look at it. But after a while, you know that the why isn't going to help you. What do I need to do? Who do I need to call? Who can help me? Where do I need to get to? It's going to help you to begin to move forward so i'd say try not to spend too much time in the analyzing stage it's far more that you need to be proactive moving forward and in that solution stage mm. i'm thinking about it that goes to people applying for jobs so if something isn't happening you know you know why why aren't you getting the you know the interviews and maybe just you know go into a <clears throat> somebody in recruitment asking somebody who knows and getting some more feedback you know, to learn to pivot a little bit, as you say, to be flexible and actually put something into action, change your um, uh, Absolutely, Paula. And, you know, with that, whilst I was saying don't spend too much time in analysing what we should be doing, which is more powerful in our career, and um, is the self-reflecting. So be it that I'm going for the job interviews and so on. Okay, where am I? What am I to, to become really aware? Sometimes I'll, don't be afraid to ask for feedback. And I'd say when you get, and when you are getting feedback, I'd say my tip, especially if you really struggle with all of this kind of stuff on the knockbacks, I would say, see it like a sieve, right? What are the things that people are saying to you, the substantive things, let them land in the sieve and they'll be there. The things which you know, you know, it's a bit like we get used to this in life and from friends and from colleagues and from our boss, we know to let the other stuff go. Yeah. So what's the substantive stuff? Yeah. yeah, exactly, that I need to work on and build on. And sometimes it will be hard to hear, but also begin to develop your own self-awareness of where you are. So it might well be if you're going out there and now going for interviews and so on, record yourself on your phone and what have you, you know, ask yourself those questions, play it back, you'll then hear, am I speaking too loud? Am I speaking too quietly? Am I going too fast? Do I need to slow myself down? The things like that some people do in the mirror, how do I look? How do I, how, you know, how do I come across when I'm um, pretending to answer a question? Am I fidgeting mm -hmm. too much or what have you? You know, and get somebody you know, like and trust, perhaps to go through some of those things with you um, uh, so that you can get that rich authentic feedback on who you are and where you're at mm, mm. yeah yeah no good advice good advice so i mean there's lots there for anyone that that has been made redundant and is trying to make sense of it all and think about you know the next steps um and i know for anyone considering um you know starting their own business obviously you've mentioned your book soul trader um british library events are they still happening on yeah yeah, so at the moment, I mean, at the moment when we're recording this, or you might be perhaps be watching this not much less, mm -hmm. I'm running, um, so uh, I run two, reg at the moment, I, I, I run two regular workshops, which are called Soul Trader, based on the book Soul Trader. So that will share you, that will take you for a journey um, of clarity. Who are my customers? What do my customers want? Courage of being yourself. Cooperation. What support do I need? Conversations. How am I going to market myself? Creativity to be creative about it. And compassion, being kind to yourself. And change. And also run a workshop called Networking for Success, which helps you to learn how to network effectively and to utilize your own network. Currently, they're being run monthly online. If you um, go to my website, um, Soul Trader website, or British Library Business um, and IP Center. So I'd recommend the British Library, type it in British Library Business and IP Center into a well-known search engine. It will come up and they provide heaps and heaps of advice on starting a business. They've got lots of free advice webinars and so on some one-to-one -one sessions low cost or no cost all on everything from research in your market to marketing finance and so on so there is lots of help out there and they've got a network of other libraries um, and so there's lots of stuff out there and so don't overlook also the other stuff there's books 
there's people post all sorts of things on social media. So really be shrewd and canny. And I always say, to be mindful about what kind of stuff you're consuming. It might be that spending one hour less on a well-known social media platform that might be far more just chatty and spending an hour more on one which is far more about your professional development or studying or reading a book or looking online on, 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 on uh, um, uh, uh, inspiring stories or researching your industry could be time really, really well spent. Yeah. And it ties in with what you said about, you know, we're tied in our jobs and identities. If you are moving to something different, actually acting as though you're in, within that identity already makes sense, doesn't it? I think that makes a, a big deal. Surround yourself with those people and, 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 and have that thirst and that keenness to come forward. And also let your passion and your personality shine. I think it would be one of the last things I'd say, you know, Paula, I think that when you're going through this and going through um, a change or starting out new or whether it's that you're going into a new job or a new industry or, or starting a new business, you and how you come across is as important as the knowledge and everything else. And that's going to be one of the things that's really going to make people think, I'm going to give this person a chance, chance whatever age, whatever background it is that you happen to be. So really make sure that you are your ally, you're on your ambassador, you're your best friend. <laughs> and you take your own counsel you know really believe in yourself back yourself um, and and go for it yeah yeah those are wise words because you know everyone can get that certificate but nobody else can be you well thank you very much so all Rashid's um details is British Library and his own website they'll be below the video so you can contact him there so thank you Rashid Thank you so much, Paula. Real pleasure. And good luck, everyone, wherever you are on your journey. Enjoy it and um, take good care. Brilliant.